smell like heaven I found my bones and gave me comfort when I feel alone now you're gone I'm alone I guess it's time to get better through the pain I will go alone if I fall Best friend to 23, she left her body and hovered above me. Best friend to 23. I heard the heavens crying above me. They gained an angel. I lost a friend. I felt like dying again and again. I went through hell, stared of death. But I keep fighting with each living breath. I saw no way out from where I stood. Felt like the fire had burned me for now. Me. You're gone. I'm alone. I guess it's time to you get better. everyone and welcome back to the nest i am your host misfit and i'm very excited to bring you yet another episode of this podcast we had a great show planned for you tonight we're gonna be going over the games from this past week and last night since we are a day late as you can uh, see thanks to my producer here uh but yes no let's uh let's dive right into this one i'm joined tonight by juggle god and hyper knight uh unfortunately we did not find enough guests so we had to resort to getting uh you know some bad ones here of course hyper knight was nice oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah why don't you introduce yourself like, harsh. I, I mean harsh. i mean the the guests <laughs> matching the quality of the host of course ah know. true, <laughs> true. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in a more serious note i'm hyper knight coach slash manager of crusaders also potential player if we're really that desperate the clutch or the the hypernite somber goes the, the hyper the hypernite somber does go hard. zoning emps Tuck, zoning are legendary e- they, they are quite legendary most damage taken in a map i've got that bookshelves emp <laughs> i do that very uh very <laughs> yeah. impressive player here juggle we've had you on here so many times now it's it's almost like you're a regular but why don't you give everyone just one more introduction for yourself sure my name is juggle god uh, and despite the name i am not a winston main i am in fact a wrecking ball main um but i do i do enjoy winston as well i i think my juggling skills while not as as not as crisp and high quality in overwatch as in real life i still do um pride myself in them I um, play by play caster, usually cast with a Mintus. And yeah, um, just uh, excited to be back on the nest. Love coming in here. All right. Well, without further ado, then we can get right into our recap of last week's game. Uh, we're going to start off here with Rogue Dragons versus Crusaders. Uh, and this one went uh, a little bit differently than we had predicted on the nest. 
Just a. Uh, uh, what can I say? Clutch, Cal- Cal- Clutch Caliber is just a bad player. What can I say? Uh, you know, kind of th- through that one. All yeah, right. I made sure uh, to give. I made sure to give him a good slap back in the back in the locker room. Um, nice to know uh, how your coaching habits go. You beat your players. <laughs> yeah, a lot, yeah, yeah. You? yeah, yeah. Especially Clutch. Especially Clutch. I don't blame. Especially you. Clutch. Uh, realistically, we came out and we just did not play well. Uh, I went over with them, and I've already bot reviewed this with the team. We played extraordinarily poorly. Rogue Dragons played extraordinarily well, so you know they they take the win there. I mean, I wasn't gonna say it, but like now that you have, yeah, no, I definitely think this was an off game for you guys. Uh, I don't think it's truly representative of your guys' skill. I think you are uh, a very good team in the division. I do think you guys still gave uh, them a close match. Obviously, control wasn't really your map, but you you still were close on both Escort and Hybrid. Uh, so I definitely think that this is, you know, I don't know. It, it could be weird. I'm also, also you know, like, giving a little, uh, a little sway on this based on the Rogue Dragons game from last night, which we will actually be talking about despite the fact that we don't have a match card for it. Uh, stats have not been updated yet. Obviously, we do that after the weeks happen. But yes, no, the Rogue Dragons match from last night definitely influences my thoughts on this game. Um, we'll talk about that in a little bit here. But yes, Crusaders, unfortunately, taking the the 3 against Rogue Dragons. You got any thoughts on this, Juggle God? Yeah, I was I was surprised, too. I thought uh, Crusaders were going to come in and um, take this one. Maybe not easily, but um, convincingly. So this was this was a shocker for me, for sure. Um, you know, Raph really, really popped off. I mean, it's clear from the, um, you know, from the stats that we're looking at here. So, you know, it, it's interesting because I think if we see them again, um, you know, if, if we were to see this matchup again at some point, which I don't think we will in regular season, but who knows, maybe in playoffs, um, I, I still would put my money on Crusaders, I think. Um, you know, maybe not, maybe not as heavily as I had before, but certainly, um, certainly still giving them the edge. Yeah, no, I uh, I definitely think this division especially is very close. Uh, I think Paradise Tempest did a really nice job making sure it would be picking a bunch of teams that they thought would give them uh, some good matchups. And I'm really liking what we're seeing uh, out of this division. We've had really, really close games, some upsets left and right. Uh, Los Beefers is really coming into their own. It's just it, I'm really excited to see the, the three teams that do end up making it to playoffs from this division. Uh, but, yeah, without further ado, we can move on to our next game. Uh, which I believe was Otter Oxide versus Volume. Uh, yes, it was. And this one kind of went the way everyone expected. Otter Oxide taking this one 3-0. I had the pleasure of casting this with the Akronator. And honestly, I, I kind of felt like Otter Oxide was trying to hide some of their cards. Um, I, I didn't really feel like they were at what I expected to be full form from them. Uh, they ran some players and some comps that I didn't think were their actual strategies. Um and I, I definitely don't think we've seen as strong as Otter Oxide can be. Um, but, you know, they still took us, what, three over volume zero. Didn't really have a trouble with it, only losing one point. Of course, that being on hybrid. Uh, but, yes, Otter Oxide taking this in pretty dominant fashion. We'll start off with you, Jogo God. What did you think about this match? You know, I thought that volume zero actually showed um, several moments of brilliance, and particularly on the back of Rogue. Rogue um, on, the, on Busan, and in particular Sanctuary, I think did a fantastic job, but... Um, they were maybe just a little inconsistent, right? I was um, I was talking earlier with uh, Amentus about this, and yeah, my my take on it was is that you look at like miraculous, right? Uh, I just think that the DPS line of Otter Oxide was far more consistent than Volume Zero's, and I think if Volume Zero can improve that consistency, we could see a lot more, um, you know, clo- uh, closer matches and some more dubs from them as well. Yeah, I also felt like Softcat. Softcat had a lot of weird positional yeah. choices Softcat died early in a lot of fights but on the fights where he didn't die early uh he played very very well he was he was doing a lot for the team got a lot of their final blows um but uh, unfortunately it was just not really enough for them to, to take the win uh Otter Oxide was a better team but yes i do think volume zero needs to work on their consistency and we've talked about this a lot but their tempo is still really slow they play the game at a really slow pace and teams that understand the game and can play it much faster are going to dominate them until they can get that fixed but we'll throw it over you now hyper knight uh, so yeah, I want to know what your thoughts on this one. I so badly want Volume Zero to perform well in this division because uh, they and Phoenix were likely picked to make it so that three teams could probably easy waltz in the playoffs. I want either Volume Zero or Phoenix to perform so badly, but I it just was likely not never going to be in the cards. 
to <clears throat> be otter oxide and then like you said that they might be hiding strats it would not shock me that otter oxide is hiding things they have been mm -hmm. very controlled in letting their information get out and they seem to be saving that for only what they would probably consider top of the line matches that they want to win yeah so it would not is, shock me that they are hiding strats. that is kind of how otters has worked in the past saber is uh very much the type of coach who doesn't want to let certain strats come out doesn't want to let people uh know what otters is doing wouldn't even tell me what players were coming off off rolls he made me check for myself just because you know any any bit of information you can stop from getting out is good enough for him uh but yeah we'll, we'll definitely see here we got we did get uh treated to the hawk mcnewby dps line and it was uh it was pretty pretty powerful yeah. as expected uh really enjoyed especially on rialto yeah no they uh mcnewby was going crazy on the tree i definitely yeah. liked what i saw there but yeah, that about wraps it up for this one. Let's move on to our next match now, which was going to be Paradise Tempest versus Loose Beefers. And this one was uh, a pretty interesting one. Uh, Paradise looking like they had found the adjustment. We're going to really take it to Loose Beefers. Uh, and then Beefers really turned it around there uh, for a bit for Hybrid and Assault. They really came back uh, and showed up and showed out and made this one a close one. But unfortunately, when it came down to control on the final map, uh, Paradise Tempest took it quite convincingly. So got to give credit to them where credit is due. This one is literally the exact same scoreline as the last time these two teams played. Uh, and it was a really, really good game. I definitely enjoyed what I saw. We'll start off with you, Hyper Knight. What did you think about this one? So it's very interesting uh, that you see that Los Beefers overall had more final blows to deaths. And I mean, either way, they were still really close either way. Uh, but that's very interesting. And I also think Los Beefers employs a very unique strategy compared to most teams. The comps I see them run are a lot different than what I normally see any that I've thus far seen other teams run. A lot of other teams run Brawl or Brawl Variations. Um, and Los Beefers, I don't know if they ran it as much in the Paradise Tempest game, but especially with the Word Dragons game, they ran a lot of Ball and ball centric comps to spam out the opponent. And I presume they use the same strategy in <clears throat> uh, finding some purchase against Paradise Tempest. Yeah, no, I definitely, uh, I, they definitely did use the ball. Firebats, of course, a very talented ball player. Uh, and it, it is a strategy that we see them use in pretty much every game is just put Firebats on a ball and put Harambe on something that, you know, synergizes with that, whether it be Sigma or Hog or anything else, really. Uh, and they just find ways to make it work. And I really like that. They are definitely one of the more interesting teams to watch in the league because they, they don't run the meta. They don't run brawl. They don't run double bubble. They stick to what works for them. And that's what makes them such an interesting team. Hmm. Juggle, you got any thoughts here? Yeah, I am still a beef lever, like a hundred percent through and through. I love <laughs> this team. Leavers. I, you know, um, That'll it'll never end. I and, and in particular, I'm I, I love fire bats as well. I mean, I'm a ball player and it is just a joy to watch this guy play wrecking ball. And I was rooting so hard for them, um, you know, when that when that final control map came around. But, you know, Paradise Tempest, Paradise Tempest is on top for a reason. It's because they can clutch it out in moments like this, you know, like despite um, despite the beefers coming back right and looking like they were gonna get the reverse sweep paradise tempest was able to stay calm cool and controlled just like they always do and come back and take the dub uh from the beefers so you know i i think the beef the beefers are on like the they're on like the precipice of greatness they are so close to being you know one of the top teams in this league but they just haven't quite made it happen yet but i still beef leave i still beef leave still beef leave also imagine <laughs> not crumbling in a reverse sweep couldn't be us <laughs> uh, fair enough could be paradise enough. though oh yeah Maybe, little maybe. shade thrown there, eh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know, they, 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 they kept the strong for Mac Five. They kept them at yeah, strong. yeah, yeah. They did, they did. All right, I think that just about wraps it up for this one. Obviously, a very, very close match. Even if you didn't catch this one live, I would recommend going back and watching it because it's a very good one. Uh, but yes, that'll throw us to our final match of last week, which was Team Ralu versus Phoenix. And this one not really going the way you'd expect in terms of scoreline. Although I do have it on good authority uh, that Team Ralu was not putting their best foot forward in this game, considering they were playing one of the, the lower teams Whoa. in our league. Whoa. Um, Team Growlu doing a little bit of trolling? I know, right? Never. So unheard of. Never, never. <laughs> yeah, no, not, uh, not one time. 
after Phoenix took the the first map, they did in fact uh, turn it around. Were able to take it in three one fashion, but still a little bit surprising seeing uh, Team Gralu drop a map to Phoenix. We've seen them be so dominant against even the the most top tier teams in this league. So seeing them drop the a map to a team that's in the bottom spot right now is a little bit surprising. Juggle, have you casted this one? So I want you to give me your thoughts here. Why do you think Phoenix was able to take a map off Team Gralu? Again, because I think it was, I think it was Team Growlu was just playing sloppy, and in particular, uh, Growlu, um, and you know, sloppy slash Mimi. I mean, they're they're kind of you know two sides of the same coin. I remember in particular there was a um, there was a charge in Busan Mecha Base into Phoenix's spawn, which I think <laughs> led to them winning that map. Right? They that was that was um, you know the Phoenix Phoenix got a hold of that point. It was Busan Mecha Base. And they just never let it go after that. So that yeah, I think Rally would do. Yeah, I think I think that was I think that's what was going on there. Um, you know, and when they they finally kind of settled down and started playing again, they 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 won it in convincing fashion. But I mean, like, look at the scoreline. Look at the scoreline as well, right? Like, there's no zeros for Phoenix. Yeah. Right. And I think that mm -hmm. says something, right? Uh, you know, it it. You know, it. I, I don't think it just says that Gralu was memeing. I think it also says that Phoenix has some life to them, right? Like, they um, they are sitting at the bottom right now, you know, just below volume zero. But both, both of those teams have potential. They have the tools there. They, uh, they just need to get it all organized, put in the right order, whatever it is, to, to make things work. And I think they can do it, and I think the scoreline shows it. I mean, they're they're still technically able to make playoffs if they win two maps, I believe, right? I'm not sure I, what the I'm cutoff is actually. I I, I, yeah. I, have, I think they might already be out, um, but I'm not positive. I mean, I, they'd have to win, and the teams above them, I think, would have to lose. Like the teams mm. that are undefeated right now in the division would have to lose the rest of their games to give them a chance to get in, uh, and then would have to right. come down to map differential. Would be my thoughts. Right. I don't know. We're still in, we're still in week three, so yeah. I think I'm yeah. not sure. But it's still it's still you know doable theoretically, and you know maybe this could be a moment that they rally around and make that final push to end the season. One could yeah. Help. And I want I want to say one last thing, if you don't mind, about Gralu and Gralu, because as much as Gralu can throw at times, Gralu also clutches at times. Like he's he's this he's this like polar player right where it's either it's hard either throw the dude carry. is just popping off hard and hard carrying or uh, he's throwing and it, it appears to me that theorem. there's like no in between the clutch caliber theorem do you, is that is that the what you feel the like caliber, that that's that's what i call it for our team because <laughs> uh back in 3.5 when clutch would play main tank he would either be feasting on the enemy team or absolute famine throwing the entire game away yeah so I, that, I, that, I, that just gives me that idea I think the biggest difference, though, is that I'm pretty sure when Growly does it, it's it's somewhat intentional. Clutch just <laughs> yeah. you know, turns his brain off sometimes and he, tries to go into the He, he does, he does turn. Like, I'm going to do this really stupid thing just because. Yeah, that's, that's fair. <laughs> no, definitely. Uh, I, I do like that comparison, though. I think it is very, uh, very accurate. <laughs> yeah, we will. We can talk about our, our last game now. Uh, which happened last night, which was Los Beavers to be versus Rogue Dragons. We don't have a match card for this, unfortunately. Uh, we don't update stats until after all the games have been played because it, it would be too hard to do it all the time. Like We're all volunteers here. We have things going on. We can't just always uh, <laughs> update the spreadsheet. So we, we do it after, uh, after the week's over. Um, but, you know, uh, for those of you that missed it, uh, Rogue Dragons was taken down by the Beefers. It was a 3-1 match. And I really felt like Beefers had pretty good command over the match. Uh, they ran a lot of that rock and roll mm -hmm. Sigma ball composition. And they were really good about how they played the angles. They, they did a really good job of rotating and staying away from the brawl comp that Rogue Dragons was known for. Uh, and even though they, they did drop Gibraltar, uh, as it is in that, they, they really couldn't play the Sigma ball on. They were running a lot of dive, which didn't go too well for them. Um, but when, once they reset and, and went to the back half of the series, they really took it home uh two row dragons I, I really felt like king's row and hanamura were almost unlosable for the beefers i, I it was never in doubt that they had control of the match uh taylor played incredibly harambe firebats like it really felt like every member of the beefers was really contributing and i really enjoyed what i saw in that match so i guess you guys can uh give me your thoughts we'll start off with you hypernet what did you think about the match 
I picked a bad time. My internet is dying, but oh. I think it's better now. Okay. Oh no. We can okay. Yeah, I'm back. Uh, so yeah, I think that Beefers played an incredibly strong comp into disrupting what Rogue Dragons wanted to do in their rush comp, and I think that this shows on Rogue Dragon's side a little bit of reliance on that rush comp that they because whenever I pe- I didn't wasn't able to catch the entire game. But it seemed like for whenever I was watching, they were forcing the May Cree brawl into this ball comp. Um, and I think that just favors Beefers overall because Beefers was just able to get away and run with their comp pretty much the entire time. And I think for Beefers, that's really good because it shows that they're really good at, the, uh, at this comp and they can really play against a comp that they're supposed to counter. However, I think also on Rogue Dragons, it shows an over-reliance on this Brawl comp and that they'll likely need to branch out to other comps in the future. I I would agree with that. I, I definitely think that Rogue needs to uh, not be the Brawl one tricks that they are. For the most part, I mean, they, they did run like a decent dive on, on Gibraltar, but on most maps that I, we see them play, they do run the dive, even when I, I think other comps could be a little bit better. Um, especially on Ilios, I mean, they, they run rush all the time. They ran rush on well, and that's just like not good. Like you, that is not a good comp to run on that map. You will just get out rotated. That's exactly what the beefers did. They just ran comps. Uh, and they just out rotated them. Uh, even even though the brawl has the Lucio, you know they were in open space for long enough for the far to find value, and it just it really did not go well for them. And I, I would like to see them develop some more tools in their toolkit uh, if we're going to see them be a top team in this league. So I'll throw it over to you now, Jungle God. Get your thoughts on this one. Uh, were you able to catch the match or? No, I was. I was, I was unable to catch the match last night because uh, I was actually originally scheduled to cast um, uh, another game, um, but that ended up getting canceled. Uh, so I ended up actually streaming, but um, I am really looking forward to catching this match. And, you know, just hearing you guys and um, how you're discussing it, it, it gives me th- some thoughts, you know, like the um, the first off, I'm actually surprised that the Beefers lost on Gibraltar. You know, um, that, you know, that map is great for ball, too. You know, it's it's of course you want to I, I think you, you, you typically want to play like a Winston Diva dive, right? But still, you can you can play a great, I think, Winston Ball or Winston, or sorry, Ball Winston or Ball Diva dive as well there too. So I'm I'm just a little surprised to hear that that map didn't go their way. Um, and you know, I think that this showing is it, this 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 too shows that I think Beefers Beefers again can be a top tier team. Like I said, I'm still a beef lever, and um, you know, one thing one thing about any ball comp too is that it's very it's very oh what's the word i'm looking for precise you have to be precise on ball you can't be sloppy and um fire bats is very precise and so i just think that you know my 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 gut is telling me that in this case fire bats was really on tonight you know and not in terms of just like his solo mechanics but in terms of the team play, the interaction between the team members, right? Like ball can't exist in a vacuum. Um, you have to, you have to play with your team. And so this to me just shows the re- that they're, that they understand that, right? That their coordination was there, especially against a, a rush comp. So I, I can't wait to watch this map. It's or this match. It's on, it's on the top of my list, uh, you know, um, to check out. So I'm going to be watching it either, Sunday or Monday, because uh, this is a busy weekend for me, too. So can't wait to see it. Fair enough. It's a very good game. Uh, I think that wraps up our recap here. We can now show our updated standings. Um, I do not believe this is taking into account the Rogue Dragons game from last night. Uh, but this is where the teams would have stood if I had scheduled Nest at a, at a better date. Uh, <laughs> of course, Paradise Tempest Team Growl is still mm. on top, sitting at 5-1 and one right now. Danger Close Red uh, is also up there. Uh, while they, you know, we, we've discussed their power level, uh, their record from stage one still stands, which is why they're so high up there. Otter Oxides, Rogue Dragons, and Crusaders all right there in the middle with three wins. And then, of course, uh, leading at the bottom of our division is going to be Hyperion, Los Beefers, Volume Zero, and Phoenix. Um, and, you know, these standings are still a little bit inaccurate to me. We'll talk about that more when we get to the power ranking section. But I feel like a lot of these teams 
are stronger than what their standing says or a lot weaker than what their standing says. Um, so yeah, we can run that right now uh, over to our power rankings section, uh, which will be our main discussion section for the night. I'm very excited to get into this one. Uh, curious to know your guys' takes on stuff. But yeah, we'll start off with mine, of course, in the God Gamers tier. I have actually lessened it now to two teams instead of three because I feel like these two teams are above it and I, I just don't feel like a lot of the other teams are up there with them. Also, it was because I couldn't decide which of the teams that are in my decent gamers tier I wanted to put in the God Gamers tier because all these teams are so even right now. So, of course, I have Team Gravelu and Outer Ox side of my God Gamers tier. I think they are the two best teams in the league right now. In the decent gamers tier, this is where we've had this uh, cycle of suck, as Hyper Knight was telling us. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Paradise, Tempest, Dragon, Rogue Dragons, Crusaders, and... Joey, Keepers. do you have that? Do you have that um, image by any chance? It's just pay, uh, beautiful. Uh, we just throw that one up real quick. That would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> all right well while he's working on that I'll, I'll discuss a little uh all the teams in my decent gamers here have done like well in this tournament um but they've all lost to someone in the decent gamers tier uh which is why i cannot justify putting any of them in the god gamers tier. yes thank you thank you thank you joseph mm -hmm. my good bud uh here here's it is you know we have crusaders who beat paradise who beat beefers who beat rogue who beat crusaders and so i can't justify putting any of these teams above like a tier above each other because they can clearly can comp all compete with each other so mm -hmm. i it's really it makes it really hard for me because i think all these teams are good and i definitely think the order that i have them in is the actual order uh of their skill but i you know i definitely think any of these teams could beat another on any given day it's just going to come down to who shows up better uh then in my some sauce here we have hyperion and dcr who i think are better than the low tier but i don't think they can compete in the decent gamers tier we'll get to see that with the matches they have this week and then, of course, in the I could beat you barehanded tier, we have Volume Zero in Phoenix, who have not had very good showing so far in the league. Not too different from what I had last week. The biggest difference is, of course, uh, there's only two teams in my, my God Gamers tier right now. But yes, I, I really do think we have a very competitive, uh, we're going to have a very competitive wrap-up to the season. I'm really curious to know who's all going to make it out of this division, because I believe all the people in the decent gamers tier uh, are in the same division. So that one's going to be interesting because they can't all make it to playoffs. One of them has got to go. Uh, it's, yep. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, we'll throw it over to you now, Juggle. You can walk us through your power rankings. Sure. So I've got Team Growlubu at the top in S tier because um, they, they've won stage one. They've looked to dominant, even though they've been memeing. You know, it, it, I feel like you still have to take into account their memeing, right, when they play some of their games. And um, like... It, um, it, yeah, like no, nobody else, nobody, really, I think, showed me that they can compete on the same level as Team Gralu, especially when they start getting serious, right? And so to me, they're alone in S tier right now. Um, A tier, I've got Paradise, Tempest, Crusaders, and Danger Close Red. Um, you know, Danger Close Red has shown that they play super consistently, um, and, uh, you know, I think I I think they they deserve to be in A tier right now. Crusaders, especially, I think, because they were able to take that W over Paradise Tempest, really deserve to be in that conversation as well. And like honestly, as I was making this up, I almost had six teams like in A tier. <laughs> um, but uh, I eventually I eventually um was able to put the was able to separate them, and I think Outer Oxide um is good, but I. Don't think they're, you know, I, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not buying into all the outer oxide hype yet. I want to see a little bit more from them before I rank them higher. Uh, Los Beefers Day B, um, you are almost in A tier too, but there's a couple reasons that you're not. Number one, B tier um, is just more alliterative for you, so that's number one. But the actual reason is that um, I just need to see that consistency a little bit higher from beefers to to put them to put them up and plus there's also my own bias there i just love the beefers um so that's uh that's why i put them there hyperion as well i decided to put in the um in in that b tier as well just because they've um they've shown moments of brilliance i think but they're still they're still not um they're not they're not quite a tier yet and then of course volume zero and phoenix are where they are just because you know, they just that's that's what their record shows. And, you know, despite, again, I think seeing great play from them, it's just not consistent yet. And until it reaches that consistency, 
they're not going to rise in my power rankings or on the uh, overall standings. So that's uh, that's that's why I've got everybody where I've got them um, for my rankings. I know these are probably a little a uh, little a uh, um, uh, maybe maybe some hot takes in there, but uh, I stand by my power and, rankings. And I'm uh, ready. Uh, got some hot <laughs> takes. Yours, I yours are pretty mild compared to what he's got over there. <laughs> I mean, this Listen, is true. Well, this is true. Not biased. Yeah, I don't that's... know what you're talking about. But definitely not biased. <laughs> definitely, definitely not biased. No, 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 not at all. But uh, yeah, that that uh, that does it for my power rankings. Unless you guys have anything else to say about them. No, no, I, I like yours. I like your justifications. And now I, I would love to hear the story behind what we're going to get out of Hyper yeah. here because you, you better, you better <laughs> yeah, I, I, need um, some, I need some expla- explanations here we, ASAP. We have, we have God's gift to Owlet, Clutch Caliber. You call him the best player in Owlet. And how can I not <laughs> believe in the idea that we are the best team if we have the best player in Owlet, Clutch Caliber? I, mean, I want to go on record saying that's false. I, I have never once said that. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, okay. Well, uh, I mean, realistically, if I, if I, if I didn't, <laughs> if I didn't put, if I didn't believe in the capacity of my team potentially being number one, there would realistically be no reason for me to continue trying to help improve the team and trying to keep pushing them forward to where I believe, uh, they are realistically if you want in my genuine honest opinion it's my my power rankings are basically your power rankings in that i believe otter oxide and team grulu are the top and everyone else is kind of in that everyone in that in our division that's kind of at the top is in that mesh of the strange gray area where it's not really clear who's going to come out on top because you know as in the cycle of suck, you know, <laughs> no, everyone's beaten one other person at the very least. We've all, you know, lost games. We've all won games. It's kind of hard to tell who is the strongest, who's the weakest, and the different circumstances surrounding those wins and losses makes it kind of strange into who's actually going to make it into the playoffs. And I think it'll be a genuine bloodbath for who gets there in the end. I think I, four uh, through six, and you could add you could add Crusaders there, and it'd be three through six, which would be all of our teams. You could assort them in any order you realistically wanted to or realistically wanted to justify. And I think you could make a legitimate justification any way that you put it. Um, and then my other tier is that teams have to step it up. It's pretty much in the same order that you have it, and it's the order of the standings. And Hyperion is... Close to that tier, but they still need to step it up. Danger close red. I be, you know, they have had a good record, but I believe they can they need to prove it in this division that is already such a bloodbath. And we'll see with Paradise Tempest, like, you know, if that holds true, if this changes the weight of everything. Um and then volume zero and Phoenix, unfortunately, um, they have a lot to prove compared to a lot of the other teams that I've ranked. Mm-hmm. I like how you respect them so much that you couldn't even bother to spell their names correctly. <laughs> very telling. I, <laughs> I tried, okay? I'm yeah, very dumb honor. and also stupid. I'm very dumb and also stupid, if you couldn't tell. So. The Crusader's uh, special. <laughs> nonsense. Write that, 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 that one down. <laughs> Uh, no, I, uh, I I I agree with your take on that. Mostly because you're just saying that I'm right. I, I appreciate that. I need I need this. I mean, here. you know, at least I actually went to try and spell them instead of just you know using their abbreviations. You know, I gave it some effort. I'm like <laughs> somebody about. That's what most people bro. Like what? That's what most people no. do. All right. That's no. What I mean. no. Either way, I think whatever. Both, both of y'all are both of y'all are slackers. I've got the icons and everything. Well, yeah, you, I mean, you forgot Rogue Dragons on yours, so uh, I don't want to hear it. Actually, like, you're missing an entire team. Like, Holy shit! You're right. I am. <laughs> Come on. Let's get Rogue Dragons. Here. All right. Hold on. Hold I, I know, on. Rogue I know, I know their I know their icon isn't isn't visible on the thing, but yeah. you know, I'm colorblind. I, I had no idea that I was <laughs> that missing should, that one. That should help you in this game. No. How? How would it help me? I couldn't see them at all. Colorblind make it easier to see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh i'm putting i've got to put i've got to put rogue Dra- dragons in b tier by the way because really? um yeah because You're until i see them place red. 
Yeah, because until I see them, because until I see them play more than just Rush, I I don't think they can adapt. I I want to see more from them. I mean, isn't that what isn't that already what Crusaders does though? Is play nothing but Rush. We have we've adapted. Yeah, but they we, we play we play exactly. Monkey Rush. It's oh. the we play Monkey Rush. You see. There you go. We learn. We're so learning. Different. So it's very different, different Misfit. I don't, I don't hear it. I, <laughs> no, I definitely. Uh, I do think we're we're in pretty much agreement here about how this is going. We might we might order the teams a bit differently, but I we're all pretty much in agreement that Team Gralu is on top, and that everyone below that from like two through six just like has to find a way to make it work. It's really yeah. competitive in that section. It's of the competitive right now. Mm-hmm. And I'm really yeah. excited to see that. I, I I agree with you guys. I definitely think Hyperion can get in there. I just we have we haven't really seen them play well enough. You know, we haven't seen them really have a showing that makes us go, yes, Hyperion's figured it out. They're in that conversation for that too. When you look at their team, there's just enough issues for me to not uh you know put them up there. I think grouping them with Danger Close Red, which is what I've done, is pretty adept because I think Danger Close Red is the same way. I, I think Hyperion and Danger Close Red are both a lot better than Volume Zero and Phoenix. But I don't think they're anywhere near, uh, like anyone above them, uh, in any way. I, I think they still have a long ways to go in that, and I hope they can find a way to make it work, or else uh, I don't think they'll be getting into our season playoffs. Well, I, I mean, I, Hyperion, Hyperion, I think is pretty much guaranteed unless Volume Zero rises above them in their division. If I'm not I, mistaken on how playoffs work. I don't understand all the DCR hate. Um, I think. I think DCR has proved themselves this uh, season. So, uh, you know, like, uh, like I think you can argue with the records a little bit, but not enough to put them as as low as you guys have. I, I don't know. I don't know. That's just my that's my take. I know that, you know, other people, I think even in chat think uh, think I've uh, uh, over, you know, I've hyped up DCR a little too much. But no, I think they've earned it. I think they've earned it. I mean, like, I'm not saying you're incorrect. I'm just saying the only, like, really big win that they have is against Rogue Dragons. And that was the first game of the entire season four. And that was a long time ago. Rogue Dragons has gotten a lot better since then, right? And even then, like, mm-hmm. I, I like since then, the two of their wins are against Phoenix and Volume Zero. And their other win is a forfeit win against Team Growlulu. Since then, they've lost to the Los Beefers. They've lost to Paradise Tempest. They haven't shown the ability to compete with those top tier teams. So right now, I just can't put them in the rest of the year. So, I'm sorry, did I say something funny, Crusaders? Yeah, I'm pretty sure you just might have spoiled tonight's uh, thing. I don't know what you're talking about. Shush. Um, well, what's hilarious is I completely missed it. Yeah, don't um, worry about it. I think okay. that's what you have to do. I, I happened to zone out during that. <laughs> Just for a moment. <laughs> and by the way, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna look over at chat anymore either. I'm not gonna look over yeah, at chat because I don't want to get spoiled. I don't want to get spoiled. Yeah, so so chat, I'm ignoring you now. It's not because it's it's not that I don't love you. It's just I don't want to get spoiled for this cast. So yeah, that's my bud. I'll take uh, I'll take full responsibility for that. That is a that is a misfit moment if I've ever that seen is, that, is, that is a misfit <laughs> moment. It's bad, as bad sure. as it gets right there. Uh, my apologies, but uh, regardless, you know I, I I still think that DCR has some ways to go, and I think they could get there. I like a lot of the players on this team, but they just need to uh, their tempo again is an issue, and I, I think that they they need you know to show like they also run a lot of like weird stuff, right? Like they run some comfort picks from time to time. They also run a lot of rush. I need to see them really show that they understand the meta and really show that they understand Overwatch at a high enough level to compete with the teams in my decent gamers tier and my god gamers tier. Because right now, I just don't think they're there. Fair, yeah. I, I guess um, this will be exciting for me to find out later on in just a couple yeah. hours. I can't... I'm, I'm excited. I'm now more excited uh, than I was even before to check this out. So, yeah. This will be a fun, fun match to cast tonight. All right. Well, I think that just about wraps it up here for the power ranking section. We would do a prediction section at this time, but because we already did it late and some games have already happened, there's kind of no point. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I guess I guess we can talk a little bit about it since, you know, the, the two games sure. that haven't been played, uh, I guess we can just, like, bring them up. The, the uh, let me check the schedule real quick. Just I did sure send I in, I did send in my preds to Joey, so I'm, I'm happy wow. to talk about what I... Thought, well, we'll um, have uh, Otter Oxide in, but... Phoenix and Team Gralu and Hyperion. And obviously, I mean, based on my power rankings, you guys know that I'm going to pick Otters and Team Gralu for those. Yeah. Uh, for sure. Same. I think Hyper Knight, you're in, you're in agreement with that as well. 
Uh, yeah. No, our oxide will lose if they play McNuby. McNuby, terrible True. player, awful player, yeah. uh, bottom, bottom, worst player in the league. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. You know, otters don't yeah. play McNuby. Just don't play him. Uh, miraculous, so much better anyway. True. No, I think that that just pretty much does it. Uh, we talked a lot about where we thought the teams uh, lined up in the power ranking section. We don't got to go over it now. Uh, yeah, that one that won't be fun. Obviously, uh, thank you guys for coming out and, and joining me here on the show. It was a lot of fun having you guys on. Always a pleasure. Uh, but yeah, that's going to wrap up our broadcast for tonight. Make sure you go check out the replay casted by uh, this man, Juggle God himself. Uh, it's going to be a great one, of course. I definitely didn't spoil the outcome, but you know, it's fine. <laughs> And uh, we'll have some other games on Sunday. Like we just mentioned, the Team Growlu and Otter Oxide games will be on Sunday. So those will be casted as well. Make sure you go check those out. Uh, but yeah, that just about wraps it up for us here. Thank you all for coming out and showing your support for The Nest. Joey and I love seeing you guys out here every week. It means a lot to us. Uh, and yeah, that'll do it. Good luck in your ranked games tonight. We'll see you next time. I lost my best friend to 23. She left her body and hovered above me. I saw no shadow. I looked around, searched every building and home that I found. I saw no shadow, but felt a glow. The warmth inside me kept me afloat. It felt like heaven, I found my bones. It gave me comfort when I.